Hello and welcome to Corporate Crossover, how the mobile revolution is affecting the overall corporate experience, a Finextra webcast with Mises. And joining me today are Helena Forrest, who is Product Strategy and Commercialization um, Manager at Deutsche Bank. Uh, next to her is Tim Tyler, who is Solutions Manager for Mobile and Mobility at Mises. And next to him is David Rose, who is Regional Product Manager at City. So, I mean, you know, talking to banks uh, over the past 18 months, mobile always comes up, especially in the retail environment. You know, it's kind of hard not to know there isn't a retail bank out there that's not coming out with some sort of mobile solution. And this, is, of course, is bleeding into the corporate world. I think it's coming from people having devices, having tablets, having smartphones, and then they want that in their own job. So I think the, the big question I'm going to start off with, and I'm going to start with you, Helena, mm -hmm. is what are what are the corporate clients demanding in terms of mobile smartphone functionality and tablet functionality? Um, I think um, we see mobile really just as an additional channel rather than um, the demands or the requirements from the corporate being, being completely different. I think what they want is um, access to information, to real-time information, um, anytime and anywhere. And depending on the product or the solution that are that is being offered to them, I guess they choose different channels to access that information. That that multi-channel delivery. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, is that is that? I'll, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with you last, Tim. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll ask, I'll ask the two banks first. What, yeah, what do you see? Very much the same at City. We mm -hmm. we see a sort of demand for information, wanting to know what's going on in the account, transactions waiting approval. Um, as well as being able to authorize high value payments while on the move. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we've been surprised at the take on of it and the use of um, mobile because we kind of um, didn't expect the, the value of transactions going through mobile initially. So you're seeing sort of corporate treasurers want to, you know, duck into Starbucks and and approve a, a transaction? Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and they're wanting to control the account, um, probably to a great extent that we um, expected. They wanted to control the approval of funds, um, where in the past they may, may have delegated that authority, they're now taking it back with mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you, seeing, are you seeing this, is it, do you think it is from people having personal phones and then wanting it in the corporate environment, or is this there something about going, something, a revolution in corporates that is changing what they want? Um, I th it, it, both, I think. Mm. You've got the whole bring your own device, which many corporates are looking at, evaluating, and people are starting to bring other devices into work and wanting to use them. But it's just the, uh, the speed of advancement of technology that people are having in their personal lives, which they're setting a level of expectation that they ought to be able to do things in the same way in their corporate life. So that's not just the device itself, it's actually the experience on the device. I've seen uh, some sites that have rolled out mobility and it's just a re-rendering of online mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work on the mobile device. So I think it's feeding back into the banks as well that, that they've got to rethink the user experience of what their customers are doing. Why, why doesn't it work? Why, why can't you just replicate the online experience? Um, I think this is particularly relevant co corporate banking as well. Uh, some of the transactions that people are doing are going to be a lot more complex than what you might be doing in a retail environment. And if you go down a transaction banking route as well, for example, something like a letter of credit or a guarantee, you've got a lot more information that you have to manage and deal with that, quite frankly, isn't suited to a small screen device. So you might template it, it might be initiated on a desktop, but as you just said, it's going to be the mm. approval and the release of it which is relevant and appropriate for the mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you seen that Deutsche Bank has kind of uh, has made a, a lot of uh, noise and news over the past year and a half about corporate mobile. I mean, have you found that, that you can't just replicate the online experience, it has to be a completely different product? I mean, we have um, launched a mobile authorization a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, to our corporate clients and it has been a huge success, especially in Asia. So. I agree again with both gentlemen in terms of what type of, um, I guess, solutions you can offer through the mobile device. So not everything will be applicable. Um, so certainly we, we do see quite um, a strong demand for this type of services from our, our corporate clients. And based on the solutions that we have been offering through the mobile, they have been very successful. Mm -hmm. 
I think I would add to that as well that it's we have to be careful what we define as mobile. Yes. And what's caused the big confusion about that is tablets. So mm, that was uh, my next question. You know, we, we, <laughs> could, we could argue that there's Android devices and BlackBerry devices, but really we mean iPad, mm. which is what's the most prevalent out there. And you can do more on that, but you still can't just replicate your online experience typically onto that device. You can obviously put a lot more on there. So if we go back to the example of a letter of credit, yes, you could initiate a letter of credit on a tablet, but you shouldn't just do that by using your browser and bringing up what the normal online banking experience might be. You really ought to optimise it for the different ways in which people use those devices. Mm -hmm. And onli online, you wouldn't be swiping things, you wouldn't be having uh, such interaction that you would right on a touch device. So really tablets are touch devices more than mobile and that's a whole other area that we have to be conscious of I think. Mm. I think you also see the convergence of the different devices so it's very hard to say you know what a phone is currently being used for and what a tablet is, is being used for. It's really about offering um, consistent experience, user experience to the customer mm. um, independent of the access channel if you want. So when you're talking about tablets, I mean, are, are we talking about iPads primarily, or I, I, yeah, Apple iPads, or are you seeing other Samsung or God forbid BlackBerry, or I mean, is this, is that what we're talking about, the Apple product? From a vendor perspective, we're looking to cater, and we're seeing demand for Android. Mm -hmm. um, BlackBerry is very key from a mobile phone device. Um, despite all the problems BlackBerry have had and RIM have been having, they're still very prevalent out there in the mm. corporate community. Um, but it just hasn't taken off from a tablet perspective. So really what we see, and I don't know if you would agree, it's iPad and Android primarily that we're having to cater for. And we'll see what happens with Windows when it comes. Yes, <laughs> all, the, all these different vendors yeah. to look at. Yeah. yeah. I think in reaction to the iPad, I mean, pe people are the Windows PCs, um, laptops have dropped in price, so you know I don't think that option has completely gone away. Mm -hmm. But we certainly, you know, we did a survey at Eurofinance, and we um, most people are looking at tablets as a future opportunity. Um, but I think on 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 mo any mobile, whether it's tablet or mobile device, usability is key. You know, the, um, it, the people are a lot more um, particular about how how to navigate through the menus. So I think that's something you mentioned was um, absolutely usability is a big big part of our design of the mobile functionality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I would completely agree with that, and it's mm -hmm. something I think is overlooked quite often. Is it really doesn't matter what type of device people are using. We talk about mobile and mobility. Really, it's ensuring that people have um, the best experience they can when they're using your services over the, the device that they're choosing to use. So we could all just roll out our online banking onto a tablet mm -hmm. or reformat it down onto a mobile phone, but it doesn't work. So it does come back absolutely to ensuring that you have the design of each um, version appropriate for the device that people are coming in on. I wanted to get a little bit um, sort of moving on from what you were talking about, the different you know channels delivery and also uh, oh you can't really replicate an online product. It has to be a, a mobile product in its own right. you know and, and if a lot of these bring your own devices are sort of bleeding over from the consumer world and the retail world, what strategies are banks moving towards to, to build these corporate products? Are they enhanced retail bank offerings or are they dumbed down? big corporate offerings, you know, what's, what angle are most banks coming from? I, I don't think I'd say our um, application is dumbed down. It's, mm -hmm. Ours is really an extension to the online application. So approving payments that have been created on, on the online version, um, getting information that is available on both. Um, so certainly not dumbed down. Um, but I, I think we focused on the top five to ten things that folks were using. So okay. we looked at what does someone need while they're mobile? Um, what is the key thing? So it came down to information, knowing that there are payments waiting for approval, um, as well as being able to, to manage the high value payments, batches, etc. Uh, How did you find those five to ten things that were most being used? Was it was it interviews with the customers or did you sort of look at their behavior with the product? Both. Um, it yeah. was absolutely, we went out to customers to ask their opinion and their view. Um, and that really vindicated the information that we'd already looked at to see what they were doing. Um, so we, we kind of also put ourselves into the shoes of the treasurer to see 
you know, what, it, what would he be doing on a normal um, day while traveling uh, or out and about, even within his own building? Um, and those are the things we focused on. Yes, certainly user research is, is very important. So, um, you know, clients are really driving the uh, solutions that we're offering to, to them. So, you know, depending on how they use the devices and what they're using them for, we're trying to tailor those solutions based on on, on their behavior, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you have a list of sort of like the five to ten most used functions on the product? Or? I think it's very similar to mm -hmm. um, what has already been mentioned. So it's about consuming information that is maybe relevant for strategic decision making, um, but also approving things, so authorization, um, tracking things. Yeah. And I think, Liz, coming back to the point you made about the crossover from retail as yeah. well, I think it's a different path in retail where um, we're seeing uh, through mobile web usage in particular that for a lot of people their primary way of interacting online now is through a mobile device. Whereas in the corporate world people are still inherently tied to their desk with a desktop with a browser. So it is looking for what we can deliver outside of that environment whilst they're mobile that's suitable for those devices rather than can we deliver everything in the same way that we would for retail. I think we could offer, depending upon the corporate, the size of the corporate, what they wanted from it, a version of a retail application. Mm. Um, you know, balances, transfers, historic information, etc. So, um, is, one is that what the smaller corporates are looking for? Sort of a enhanced version of the retail offering? Or are they looking for more? Again, I think it depends upon the size of corporate from my mm -hmm. experience. So the, the one-man traders and the, the small to medium enterprises almost want an equivalent of retail on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the larger corporates, it's as you were saying earlier, it's going back to this approval type mm -hmm. model where it's what are those specific instances that they're going to need to use a mobile for. And we have to consider the security of it as well because all of a sudden transaction value is vastly different to what you might be having within a retail environment. So whilst the bank might be willing to do analytic uh, risk prevention on 15 to 20 pounds worth of a transaction, I don't think they want to do that on a 10 million pound transaction. So you've got to look at those profiles as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, how about internally? I mean, I know that the, the buzzword, you mentioned multi-channel delivery and everything's customer focused, but I mean, if, in terms of traditional relationship managers, do they view this channel as competing against their traditional relationship with the corporates or is it, you know, how, how, is that, how does that culture change? No, I, d I don't think they do. I think it's very much a complementary device. I think mm -hmm. it's an extension of the existing platform. You know, we have clients that will import payments um, but approve them on mobile. So mm -hmm. you wouldn't be importing, you know, from an ERP system onto mobile, uh, you know, directly. You'd, so we're offering them the batching functionality to approve them remotely, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's about giving customers choices. So depending, mm -hmm. again, on the type of product that they're using, type of transaction that they're executing, um, they will have different needs and depending on the situation where they are. So it's about giving them the choice rather than, you know, having channels competing against each other. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, as you mentioned, you know, both of you mentioned the, the functionality <coughs> that is most used. So it's sort of that, you know, balance checking and uh, approving and, but the real sort of relationship is still done face to face. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I would say so, yeah. It's, it's more kind of resolving your instant queries as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And depending on the situation, certain channels will be more relevant than others. And uh, yeah, we're tra trying to give them or offer them the choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when did this, um, you know, I, I've been talking to retail banks about 18 months about mobile banking, but when, I know Deutsche Bank started a few years ago, but when was when were you first hearing from your corporates that this is, this is a functionality that they want? Uh, you're rightly pointed out, Liz, that like the mobile authorization has been out there for quite some time, for several years. Mm -hmm. So we've been hearing or getting this feedback from our clients for quite some time. Um, but I think we're trying to... Um, for additional functionality, for example, going back to the mobile authorization, in the meantime, we have added additional functionality to it for, you know, um, giving the corporate the ability to um, get their account statements or additional information on their accounts. Um, 
So it's more kind of going deeper into the solutions that have been identified a few years ago and kind of expanding the offering. Mm. Have, have you seen that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Same same thing. I, th I think the other point I wanted to mention is it's important to make a conscious decision what to leave out of these devices. Okay. Um, because you c it's very easy to just throw functionality at people, but it's got to be usable, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's... Yeah. Similar. Yeah, and uh, it's it's quite refreshing from my perspective as well to um, as to have a couple of banks here that have quite defined views about it because what I'm seeing talking to banks all over the world is that we're seeing requests for mobile in the corporate environment, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, banks don't actually have an idea mm. what they want. They just think oh, we've got to have mobile, so they put that f from our perspective onto RFIs and RFPs. And that's, it's a one line, mm -hmm. we must have mobile. Um, some others go completely against what you just mentioned, for every single piece of functionality they're after offering online, mm -hmm. they say, must be offered mobile as well. So I think there's an awful lot of educating still to do of the banks as to what they need to be thinking about to offer mm -hmm. their customers. And it is reining the functionality back in somewhat and, and being more um, prescriptive with it, I think, in terms of, this is what you'll get. You don't want to do everything, mm -hmm. but you should be thinking about these specific areas. So, in terms of mobile, you should be thinking as sim you know as simplistic as but not sim but you know as simple and efficiently as possible. That type of functionality. Targeted. Targeted. Very good. That's a much better <laughs> word. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely should be, and I, I think if we compare it back to retail again, mm. you know, one could argue retail mobile started maybe 10 years ago mm. and is only now starting to gain real traction. Uh, and I would suggest that on the whole, we're probably uh, two to three years behind the curve mm -hmm. with corporate mobility. Certainly the bigger yeah. organizations are there. But it is, but even with retail banking, I mean, 10 years ago, we're only looking at sort of checking your balance on SMS. Now I think it's with the smartphones and the tablets that have that have pushed this really of uh, functionality, both both on retail and corporate side. I, I think uh, mentioning smartphones that that's probably led mm. the the push towards more mobility. Once you get off the inconsistencies of the old, uh, you know, numeric keypad phones with very mm. small screens, uh, the experience people are enjoying with smartphones now is, I think, definitely leading the drive towards getting more and more services mm -hmm. available on them rather than just small screen mobile web type mm. functionality and as you said sms mm. which is still useful yes. in its own right and <laughs> what we have to be careful of is not just to think about western europe the states uh, etc we have to think about what is appropriate across all the countries that we as organizations might deliver services to mm -hmm. so actually we might still need to deliver some of this for example a transaction approval the USSD in certain countries, uh, because that's what's most appropriate for them. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned RFPs, and you know this is I'm looking at from a technical perspective how banks go about getting mobile for the corporate for the corporate side. I mean, is this is this uh, are banks looking for more partnerships? Are they looking for innovation teams outside the bank, or did you start with a team inside? You know, wait, what's the best strategy going forward on the tech side? I think it's probably a mix of both. Mm -hmm. So you want to continue having an internal team focusing on your core capabilities, like in our case, um, leveraging our global network, for example. But certainly in some cases, it makes sense to have a strategic partnership, maybe with a third party, and leverage their core competence in order to get really the best out of both worlds mm -hmm. and to deliver the best possible solution to the client quick, uh, with quick time to market. I mean, yeah. I mean, you see, if you see like a startup or a big vendor like Mises that has this functionality, it's is it is it much easier to sort of bring? Yeah, I, I think you shouldn't um, be fixed on doing everything yourself. If the expertise mm -hmm. is out there, you need to leverage that because you know, for City, we were um, slightly delayed in in rolling out mobile. We we only started rolling it out eight months ago, um, so you know, it's it's really been we're new to the market and had to make use of people that that knew what you know, what is the best thing in terms of usability, I think, as much as functionality. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sorry, I was going to add to that as well, that, you know, I, I completely agree, it, it's a mix, but it's a completely different set of challenges that are being brought to the banks than online would have. Mm -hmm. So with online banking, 
you're going to deliver typically saying, I oh, will work on Internet Explorer and Firefox. You can't just yeah. go with that attitude into the mobile world. Um, you know, there's X thousand devices out there, each of which have slightly different variances, running different types of browsers. There's different operating systems for smartphones that you have to cater for, all on different screen sizes. How do you deliver it? And I think, yes, some of the core functionality coming from the banks is ideal, but some of that adaptability uh, might be better suited coming from other vendors. And then I think you get into the field of you can go out and commission uh, smaller developers to build, I need an app that does X, but does that developer necessarily understand banking, the regulatory issues around it, the, yeah. the security, the compliance, <laughs> the risk, um, all the different principles of authorization and authentication. It's a lot more than going out and building a marketing app. And something mm -hmm. we've seen in the past is that banks have commissioned apps which serve no more than a marketing release. So they can put something out that says, we've got mobile in mm -hmm. this area and it does very little and very little badly. So I think you have to be careful of that balance. Mm. I mean, yeah, I was going to go into, into, unless you wanted to comment on what Tim Yeah, said. I just wanted to add, saying that um, you need to understand the uh, customer workflow mm -hmm. and see where mobile yeah. actually fits yeah. in rather than just coming up with a mobile app mm -hmm. that doesn't really serve the purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I wanted to go in a little bit, um, moving on from when you said it's not mobile, it's mobility, you know, and this these devices can travel to other countries and, and there are global fragmented regulations that banks have to adhere to. How does offering a mobile service where you can approve payments, how do, how do you cover that cross-border and, and the different regulations out there? We treat it as any other channel. Mm -hmm. um, we have to comply with international and with local regulations and um, we do it for all the other channels so we do the same thing for mobile really. Yeah, much the same. It's um, really an extension. If there's a, a need to address a regulation, you would do it on your online platform as well as on mobile. So, um, you know, in our approval, uh, we've rolled out to some 80 countries now um, with very little, you know, regulatory um, pushback. So it's really been uh, as an extension and a complementary device to your, your online platform. Not much regulatory pushback. That's very no, not <laughs> the functionality we are offering. Yeah. I, I think if you start getting to different space, you know, cash to mobile and payments to mobile, that's mm -hmm. a different, um, different matter. I think one of the big issues about uh, regulations is it does tend to apply more to the retail space. Mm -hmm. uh, as you just mentioned, if you're doing cash to ATM or yeah. you're doing micro payments or mobile to mobile P2P type payments, that's where the regulators come in, uh, primarily I think from a know your customer and an anti-money laundering perspective. Mm. In the corporate space, there's all, all of that's already adhered to. You're not going out trying to um, adopt new customers over the mobile channel. They're customers that you've already gone out and acquired that you want to service better. So I think that's one of the big differences where we're probably uh, less restricted in what we could do in the corporate space. I mean, you, I wanted to bring up a little bit about what, what you said a, a, a while ago that um, City started this uh, corporate mobile about eight months ago. Eight months ago. Yeah. yeah I mean, what was what was the catalyst? What 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 pushed that project forward? I think um, really, you know, some noise from clients wanting wanting mm -hmm. the device. So there was some push for that, but also I think the timing was right. You know, the the newer devices that have come out are enablers. You know, they're, they're enabling people to do more, um, and the security, etc. You know, is now a lot more of a known factor than, than previously. So that's absolutely been the case. Well, that security, I think, is still one of the biggest challenges because... It, is it? Well, in as much as that we're pushed towards token authentication and the mm -hmm. like, and it's a, a careful play between authentication and usability. So mm -hmm. we, we, we mentioned how important usability was on these devices. And at the same time, we're telling people, well, as well as your phone, so you can actually bank wherever you are, as long as you've got that little key fob <laughs> with you. And we've got to try and look at ways that we can enhance security mm -hmm. without breaking that level of usability. Because mm. too often we've seen, and I know UK retail banks have experienced this recently, where they've deployed um, token uh, generators. Yeah. And they've seen just on online banking, usage dive, because people... The most Don't secure is the hardest to use. Absolutely. Yes. So it's, again, mm -hmm. I keep saying about 
being a balance, but mm. security and authentication absolutely is. Mm. Um, and I think we have to be careful that, particularly in a, if we're looking at an, an approvals world, um, how far down an authentication route do we need to go for somebody just to put their digital signature against a transaction if they haven't originated it? Um, mm. And is there anything else that we can pull into that? So could we pull the location off the phone into being in a, you know, putting geofences in around where people can do those approvals for? And if they're outside of that geofence, okay, we go up and do step to authentication. So we increase the level of what we require. Mm -hmm. Much the same as we might do in retail and put some of the analytics behind it as well to work out, is that a trustworthy signature, if you like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that, does that ring true? Is that where yeah, you're going I, th I think the it? challenges are very similar to ours. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have a physical token that they have to take with to ensure that the person is who they say they are. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not sure how the folks are doing it. We are looking at alternatives, but it, you know, that's the same space we're in. We're using the same device we've used for the past 10 years um, on mobile. So, you know, we're still doing using the same tried and tested method, if you will. And you know, we would need to f be quite comfortable of some new technology that came in, into that space. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, you know, a conversation, uh, observations that you have of the industry, and and uh, you talked a little bit about what's going on in your own banks. But what have you seen going on at other banks? Is there any sort of apps or functionality that, you know, you think, oh, well, we should that that's that's a rather attractive functionality. We should we should examine that. Which banks do you think are doing things correct or doing things very well? Well, I'd like to think City is now, um, <laughs> because we've, you know, I think the usage has been a big eye opener for us. We, we didn't expect to um, accelerate. For instance, I think it took us six months to do a billion dollars worth of transactions, and then we did another two in two months. So the it's go gone pretty viral. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, our focus has really been on client feedback, on usability, and we assume clients have more than one provider. Um, in our space, you know, they don't just single bank, they, they multi-bank and, and use other applications. So that's probably the most valuable source. We've not really done um, a review of other banks' products to an in-depth degree, you know, but we have gotten feedback from customers. I mean, isn't that the real driver? Isn't that what corporates are, are looking? It's not so much mobile, they just want speed and efficiency and convenience? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. Um, it's it's really about the convenience factor. Mm -hmm. um, the, like I said, the top top used functionality that we focused on. Um, and in some ways, I, I didn't really want to copy any other banks. We wanted to to look in our own space and, and you know, I think your point you made, mm -hmm. some, some folks are u going into mobile for the sake of it, mm -hmm. um, whereas we wanted to be meaningful and, and yeah, give, you know, take mm -hmm. the client's view on it. Mm. Did you, I mean, did, did, did Deutsche Bank experience the same sort of viral take up? As, yeah, as I it? think it's, um, for clients, it's very important to be reachable and to be mm -hmm. able to act up on the information. So uh, um, we very much focus on delivering a global solution, really across currencies, a globe, um, across different uh, geographies. Mm -hmm. And I think this is how we are trying to um, differentiate ourselves really from competition. But I mean, you. you you can see quite um, sophisticated and fun apps more in the retail space mm -hmm. where people are trying just to to be useful or mm -hmm. adding some value. Maybe that is yeah. not even directly related to banking services. You, you couldn't see any augmented reality in a corporate For example. App. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> where some of the true, innov <laughs> not even innovation, but mm -hmm. some of the heavy duty re-engineering mm -hmm. has had to go is behind the scenes. Um, because you could deliver it just tied closely into your online banking mm -hmm. or you could look at actually delivering true multi-channel capability to your customers so that they get a common and consistent view regardless of which of the challenges uh, sorry which of the channels they're using and having the long-running processes that they might start a letter of credit online, they might then do the next stage via mobile, they might then actually be speaking to their account manager over the phone to complete the next step and we need to have visibility of that all along the, the, the transaction path mm -hmm. and that's where I think a lot of banks, if they haven't done so already, is where they'll need to move to, to deliver um, value for themselves as much as for their corporate customers mm -hmm. in using mobility. What I mean, maybe maybe video could be introduced in sort of the corporate relationship via mobile. You can see, no. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's an interesting mm. one because um, 
it, it still hasn't really succeeded for banking in the retail space. Okay. Um, certain banks delivered uh, video-based um, customer support and speak to your personal banker online and uh, other banks have done that through ATMs where they've put um, cameras in or not ATMs but mm. you know in branch video conferencing mm. and it's never really taken but off. Yeah I don't I mean as a retail customer I don't have a personal relationship with a bank teller but as a corporate I might corporate treasurer I might have a personal relationship with my bank relationship manager I mean you're not going down that road. <laughs> not yet. I, I, I don't think it's something that mm. we, we discount. I, mm. I would struggle at the moment in terms of video that uh, the bandwidth just isn't there mm -hmm. in the, on the communication side. Yes, if you're on Wi-Fi, that's fine. Um, yes, it might be more appropriate for uh, desktop online type mm -hmm. banking. Um, if we go back to where are we going to be using these mobile devices, do we really want to be having a face-to-face -face video conversation with mm. our banker in the middle of a coffee shop? Um, we might want to be somewhere a little bit more private than mm -hmm. that, um, where we're not going to have Wi-Fi. So we'll see mm. on that one. I mean, you, may, you, may, you both of you mentioned, you know, the, the types of functionality that lends itself to mobile. But, but, you know, you mentioned a little bit about bandwidth problems. What are some of the technical barriers to offering this, this functionality to, to corporate treasurers? I think in terms of bandwidth, I, I agree, you know, it mm -hmm. depends what you offer. So, again, coming back to the simplicity argument, you know, mm -hmm. we have clients in Kenya using it with, you know, absolutely no technical constraints, um, and it's historically been, you know, a, a low bandwidth um, domain. So, you know, I, I think you've got to use what's out there and be cognizant of the locations you, you're in, you know. And have very customized solutions with a very specific purpose for that particular target group. So, um, you know, try to, to make it very targeted in terms of what you're offering through the mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, almost the space isn't as sexy as the, as the retail banking space. So, but I mean, I wanted, I wanted to talk maybe a little bit about the future, about what can, will there ever be <coughs> sexy innovation in the, in the corporate mobile space? Or where do you see this, this world moving? I think it's not about offering a sexier <laughs> solution. It's about, you know, uh, delivering what the customer wants mm -hmm. um, quickly and easily. So it's about the, uh, you know, the user experience that they expect and get them to the information that they need as quickly as possible. So I think it's about, um, you know, offering information and offering the services independent of the location and the device the customers are using. Mm -hmm. and. Um, really even customize it specifically for specific customers. So it's, you know, um, it's not just a product, it's a solution that you want to offer to your client. Okay. I mean, how about, how about at City? I mean, is there, in terms of, we talked about usability, is there, do, do sort of the, the people working on the corporate mobile solution, do they have conversations with the retail banking side to see maybe what usability and how the, the system looks on a tablet well, or phone? Well, you know, we consulted some usability experts um, in, on mobile and uh, folks that had, you know, offered to other platforms and then together with our own product folks came up with our design. It wasn't really around um, the sort of retail space. We didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't look too much there. Um, so, you know, I think you also have to be cautious that of the type of audience that you have. A treasurer approving a payment, that's what he wants to do. He wants the shortest possible path to get that done. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that's a time waster may actually be, be um, kill your product. You know, mm -hmm. so that's really been our ap approach to the whole mobile. Simple and plain and easy as possible. Yeah, I think that's you know let's get it done quickly as possible. They don't really want to spend their time while traveling looking at their bank. You know, they want to know what's going on in their account. They want that information pushed to them but also to be able to get to approve a payment as quickly as possible. I think mm. in the corporate world, rather than glitz and glamour, it's about consistency and control. Mm -hmm. um, and absolutely the point about, I've got a transaction to approve, I want to go straight to it and not look at all the frills around it. In terms of consistency though, th these people from their personal lives have an expectation of how a app should behave. And so I think we have to be conscious of that when we're delivering a service, we should apply the standards that certain devices set to interact with them. Mm -hmm. So that means we shouldn't have just a single way of doing something across all of our platforms. We should tailor them and tweak them 
so that if you pick up uh, or install an app on an Android device and you, you are an Android user, you, we don't have to educate you as a user. You naturally know how to use that application mm -hmm. and it's consistent with our other applications that you've got on there. I mean, like, we, when you talked about making it simple and easy to use, um, are we, with in the corporate side, are we moving towards almost like a, thanks for providing a white-labeled service? You know, if a lot of corporates are dealing with multiple banks, so they don't, they're not going to a bank application. It's their, it's their firm, it's their company, and everything, the, the bank services are almost transparent to that activity. Is that something we're moving towards? I think that's interesting. It I think both our banks are in the white label space, but we've not really seen mobile as being, you know, a standalone um, white label service yet. Mm -hmm. um, we may get there, but um, it, you know, I, I don't think we're there. I don't know on your side. And see maybe very specific solution targeted at particular clients where other competitors are maybe sharing, you know, the market space, mm -hmm. who would be interested in using that um, potentially. Okay. Well, I, I've, I've asked you the future question. What do you see? So I'm going to move on. Move on to Tim. Where, where, what do you think is coming next with this space? Um, I, I think it's more of in terms of talking mobility and looking at how else we can be helping our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and by customers, from my perspective, I mean the bank's customers. And so it's looking at other elements of the social enterprise that we can pull into this mm -hmm. as well. So what other networks are the corporates using that we ought to be trying to tie information between? So if they're using a platform for in-house corporate social enterprise, should we be able to plug into that so that the dialogue that we're having in terms of approvals and escalations, should they be able to use an existing client that's not necessarily ours, but use that client to be able to send an approval message through, as long as we trust the security and the authentication and we've got the risk associated with it. So I think it's looking at branching out beyond our own mobile services and being able to plug into other platforms, um, as well as looking at some of the other elements of mobility that's out there and, and making sure that um, whether it's the location of an individual or perhaps integrating the location of uh, the services and the, the goods that we've ordered uh, are associated with an LC or the such like, mm -hmm. that we can see all the information associated with that. Bringing in the supply Perhaps chain. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, looking at the full supply chain finance element and the end-to-end the -end tracking through a single portal, both online and through our mobile devices. And what we're seeing more demand for at the moment that we're looking at is perhaps more cash management and profiling on tablet type devices. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I try not to use the phrase PFM for corporates, but PFM for corporates. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a more visualization mm -hmm. that you can do because you've got a touch based environment. So you can start as a corporate treasurer or working in that area, visualizing where your cash movements are and looking at where your exposures are globally and looking at what your currency risks are and playing with that in a visual way. Mm -hmm. really is an alternative to just number crunching and tablets are ideal for that so that's an area that we're looking at that I think um, we'll start seeing uh, some traction in. Mm -hmm. So yeah I mean you mentioned City this is about an eight, eight month old project now moving into corporate mobile I mean what's what's the next step for a bank as large as yours? I, I think Tim just mentioned quite a mm. you know quite a good um, approach that we're looking at as well um, tablets are going to define a lot more I think it's going to be about customised information to our customers, um, being able to sort of pick specific modules on, on tablets and, and use that information, um, looking at your liquidity positions, yeah. things like that. I think that's where it's going. Um, tablets certainly unlock a, certain, you know, a large amount of um, potential as, as we're moving forward. Mm. The, 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 the main, the main the, all three of you have mentioned customization frequently and I think sort of the main the main takeaway I'm taking from this discussion isn't so much offering a corporate mobile product but seems to be tailoring services to each customer is that is that sort of where this industry is moving that everything's customizable and it's it meets it meets each cu customer needs absolutely certainly from Deutsche Bank side yeah we're very much focused on what the customer requirements are and the customer behavior and try to offer tailored solutions for their particular situation. Yeah. 
Agree. I, I mean, I would, from a vendor perspective, mm-hmm. absolutely agree with that. And it's about, you know, no two customers are the same uh, and are necessarily taking the same services. So it's being able to wrap those up into a package that's suitable for those and offering from a broad range of services, whether it's online, mobile, social enterprise, whether over the phone, giving them the service that they require um, mm-hmm. to, you know, customer retention. Um, you know, I'm sure we're going to see some uh, competitors that are going to try and come out purely based on a mobile social type platform. <laughs> um, in the same way that we see it in retail banking, and they're mm-hmm. going to say, no, this is how you want to do all your but you corporate see, banking. David talked about the corporate treasurers want, you know, plain and simple and efficient functions, and you're bringing in social enterprise and... and well, that, that and, absolutely mm-hmm. speaks to that, though, mm-hmm. because if you're already in a... Um, I don't want to name names. <laughs> if, if you're already in a social enterprise application, mm-hmm. why should you then have to break out of that to go and use your bank's direct channel when in fact we could plug the two into each other. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely speaks to that, about keeping it as simple and as easy and as rapid to use as possible, Mm -hmm. rather than um, putting new silos out that don't talk across each other. Mm. Excellent. Well, I've just been told to wrap it up. I think this is excellent, an excellent talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Helen, Tim and David. Thank you very much.